Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are enjoying your day so far and hope you're ready to learn a little bit more about Android Kotlin development using the Kotlin programming language. Now in today's video, I want to continue on with the introduction of the list view component inside of our Android app. And in today's video, I want to show you guys how to use the XML editor to provide our list view with a custom row and uh, it'll make it easier for us to design our application later on. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, let me show you where we left off in the last video right here, and then we'll dive into the code right afterwards. All right, so inside of Android Studio, I have opened my main activity right here. And the application, if you run it, it'll look like this, where it says, here is my row for my list view, right? And uh, how is this list even rendering that out? Well, down here inside of this custom adapter class that we created, uh, the get view method gives us this text view back that says here is my row for my list view and then because get count right here returns five we have five of those rows inside of our list view all right so remember my custom adapter is used to kind of plug into the list view and provide it with things like how many rows and what kind of views each row will render out all right so that's where we left off last time and right now I want to show you guys how to make it really easy for us to render out custom views for each one of our rows. And what I really mean is I want to be able to draw out this view right here for one of my rows. So what I mean is we have a bolded text view on the top and then we have a, another text view right under it that is not bold. So instead of constructing it through code, which some of you guys are used to doing, I'm going to use the layout of some kind of new resource file right here. And this layout file will be responsible for my row inside of this list. So let's just call it row right here, or perhaps main row. I think maybe that's the correct uh, naming convention or perhaps row main. And then for the linear layout right here, I actually want my root element to be constraint layout instead. So let's hit okay. And now I get this view inside of my uh, Android Studio IDE. So let me close out this guy. And what do I get right here? Well, this editor really is showing my constraint layout uh, element right here. And every time I have a constraint layout, I get this nice looking editor that allows me to drag and drop in components into my view. So to get my list view to look like this, we need two text view components, one on top of each other. So I'm going to drag in a text view somewhere in here. And uh, I'm going to apply some constraints for this text view by dragging uh, left click and dragging this to the top like that, left clicking the left dot and drag it to the left. And here we have a text view that says, let's say name like that and hit enter and we have the name like so. All right, so what do I want to do with this name? Well, why don't we change the font so that we can get it to bold somewhere in here. Let's just go back like that. And somewhere here, I believe I can make my text appearance bold by doing that. And now you can also change the text color to be black by double clicking that. And for the text size, I want to use 16. Uh, SP instead of just 14 SP. All right, so that's pretty good. And that's what my name text view looks like. And I want the row number text view. I want that right below that text view. So let's just drag that in somewhere inside of my screen and I'll constrain it to the bottom of the name by using the left click. And then perhaps I can constrain it to the left text view of the name right there and I should be okay. So you see how the text view is kind of to the right of the name? Well that's because this right here is 8 and we change that to 0. That'll bring it to the left like that. All right now that I have this row main.xml file what do I want to do with it and how do I want to show it inside of my list so that I don't just see here is my row for my list view. So the way we approach this type of problem inside of Android development is inside of this get view, instead of returning this text view thing, we want to return 
this row main view instead. So how do we go about doing that? Well, inside of Android, there's this thing called a layout inflator, which allows us to inflate one of these XML files, and it gives us the entire view so that we can use it as our return value. So how does that work? Well, let's just say val, and we'll create a new variable called layout inflator, and this equals something call layout inflator like that, hit the enter, and you can say dot and from. So you see it's expecting us to pass in some kind of context with this from, right? And luckily for us, we have access to M context, which if you remember from the last video, this context pretty much represents which activity we are. And basically my custom adapter is passed in a context parameter and that this is this main activity and context right here is being initialized as the contacts that we're uh, passing in. So a little bit of detail right there, but don't worry too much about it if you don't understand it. As long as you have this bit of syntax, it will work and then you'll also understand what it does later on. So layout inflator, what can we do with this little variable? So let's say layout inflator and inflate like this. And I'll use one of these calls. So let's say inflate. Let's see, what can I do? So inflate will take in a resource layout uh, ID, so r.layout, and I'll use main row or row main. Let's hit that. And then right here, I'll use a second parameter of view group. And then finally, I'll just pass in a false like so. Okay. So what does this do? Well, this gives me the view that belongs to this row main file. So let's just say let row, well not let, but val uh, row main equals that, or we can use a camel casing like so, and return the row main. Okay, so let's run our project by hitting the play button, and let's see exactly what our rows look like now that we're using row main instead of the text view. All right, so our app just launched and I loaded each one of these rows with name and text view and you see it's much more similar to what this application already looks like. So what's really going on here is the layout inflator inflates the row main based on whatever uh, resource we pass it right here. And then at the very end, we simply return that row that was given back to us by the layout inflator. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. And now that you have these two text views, what do we want to do with it? Well, the bottom text view right here, I want to show the row number colon and the actual row number like this. So how do I go about doing that for the second text view? Well, row main, this text view right here, has an ID of text view two. If you wanna see this more clearly, you should open up the XML file, and you see that uh, the second text view, which is this guy right here, has a text view of two. So I actually wanna change this ID to be position, let's see, position text view, like that, and I believe the convention is to always have a lowercase characters for the ID. So position text view is this bottom one, and I, I might as well call this name text view while I'm here. Okay, so how do I make use of position text view? Well, I think I need to edit this guy because every time I modify the ID, it likes to kind of go back to the top left. So let me bring that to that, and perhaps I need to modify some of this stuff here. So let me move that away, and that looks okay. And I believe I can click on this, drag this up here again, and I should be okay. Click on this and drag this back to the left, change this to zero, and now we are okay. So sometimes when you mess with the IDs, the constraint layout editor actually redraws out everything, so make sure you fix that before you move on. So this text view has the ID of position text view. And let's go back to main activity now so that we can render out row number and colon the actual row. So 
inside of get view, we can act we can actually access that position text view inside of row main if we call row main and say find view by ID. So that ID is going to be r.id and let's see text view. We have position text view, which is the bottom one. And inside of this little bracket bracket, you just specify what that component is. So in our case, it is a text view. So I'm going to say val position text view equals all of that. And then position text view, you can just set the text now equal to something. So let's say row number and try to run this via the instant run like that. And hopefully my code is okay and nothing goes wrong and our app runs. And now it says row number instead of the previous text view text. So inside of here, I'm going to hit a colon. And for colon, you can use a string interpolation for your text with a dollar sign. And the dollar sign will say dollar sign position from this parameter right here. So let's hit the instant change application and you see right here is this row number zero one two three and four all right so that's pretty much how you allocate uh, what your views need to look like based on the position number so finally the name right here really needs to uh, be dependent on some kind of other type of list variable in our case i'm going to use an array to kind of represent the names inside of my list all right, so I'm going to create an array inside of this custom adapter and put it up here. Let's say private and let's see val names. And this is going to equal an array list of. All right, so this probably is going to be new syntax for some of you guys that are learning Kotlin. So let me just show you how this works. This array list of type string. And inside of here, I can just type in whatever I want. So let's say, uh, Donald Trump here and let's use uh, Steve Jobs as my second row and let's use Tim Cook as my third row okay so this is my names array and I can do a couple of different things with this names array first I want to change how many rows I see inside of my list here in other words instead of the five rows this really needs to depend on the names array so let's say get count returns names dot size for the number of elements inside of this array and then finally the name text view needs to uh, actually use a name instead of this name text so let me apply the changes right now and see what we get inside of the emulator so we get three rows now so a lot of the changes are taking into effect and let's see what I want to do with the name right here well, the row main has this top text view as name text view. So let's go back to main activity. And what can we do? Well, we'll do the exact same thing as the position text view of allocating a variable for the name text view. Like that equals row main dot find view by ID. This is going to be of type text view. The ID will be r dot ID name text view like that. And then finally, name text view that text has to equal something, right? And we have our names array from the top. And you can say dot get for the index that we want to get. And let's just use position for the actual uh, row position. So that's pretty good. Let me apply these changes and you'll see this row changes quite quickly to Donald Trump, Steve Jobs, and Tim Cook. So because my names array right here only contains three names I only have three rows so if you wanted to add additional names to this list such as this right here with Mark Zuckerberg so let's say Mark let's see make it a string Mark Zuckerberg and then who do we have last we have Barack Obama the last president of the United States and here we can say instant run and we will get our application up and running again and now we have five rows so that's pretty good and one last thing I want to show before I end today's video is to make this uh, spacing on the left and the top just a little bit larger so that it matches this design and we get some more breathing room so let's go back to row main I'm going to go back to design mode 
And for the name right here, the left, I want to push it 12 uh, DP from the left and perhaps 12 from the top. And you see it changes immediately inside of the editor. And this right here, I believe if I apply these changes right now, I'll see what my application's uh, row looks like. So that's what we get. And if I wanted to apply a bit of spacing on the bottom of the row number text view, I can modify the padding of the entire constraint layout. So let's just see what this does with padding, say bottom, and let's give it a 12 DP like so, and apply the changes instantly again. And hopefully that will give me something that looks a lot cleaner. So what I really wanted to point out with this little exercise is that sometimes you have to go into the XML file and make your edits through the text right here instead of using the design. And I personally uh, rather develop using the XML editor entirely, but I do understand that this design uh, editor makes it so that it's easy to just drag and drop things into the screen. And if you're really new to Android development, this might make it seem a little easier in the beginning. But end of the day, um, all of the changes that you need to apply turn up inside of this XML file so that uh, if you want to edit it later on, you can just easily do so by looking at the XML file. Uh, this file is much more human readable compared to a storyboard in Xcode, and it's actually reusable in many parts of your application. So this is why I recommend using this XML editor and not doing things by code, kind of like what we did right here in the very first lesson. All right, so that's pretty much how a list view works in conjunction with the layout inflator so that we can kind of use our custom views that we build out using the XML editor. Uh, we also learned how to use some syntax to render out an array of names and also how to access those names using the position uh, variable inside of our git view function. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want to download all of the source code for this project, you can find the link down in the description below. Now in the next lesson, I want to discuss all of the inefficiencies that we have inside of our program right now. For example, we actually have to check the view property of our get view function just to make sure that we're not allocating more views than we have to. And we're going to have to uh, dive deeper into this view holder concept as well. So hopefully you leave a thumbs up for today's video and also subscribe to the channel for later videos on Android development. Keep on coding guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye and have a nice day.